Men's Basketball Series that dates back to 1975 continues tonight in Rhode Island's capital city. UConn and Providence meet for the 63rd time, the first in Providence since 2013. Tonight's starting lineups are presented by Subaru of New England and headlines off the top for the Huskies. No Dorka Juhas tonight. She will not play in tonight's game. A day-to-day -day foot injury will sideline her. Aaliyah Edwards back into the starting lineup for the Friars. Janae Crooms, a transfer from the Big Ten who's come back home, is the headline player for Providence. Gino Arieva looking to get his 1,132nd win in his 37th season as the Huskies head man. And Jim Crowley on the Providence side of things. In his 25th year overall, his sixth year heading the Providence program. Friars coming in, 9 and 10 on the season, 4 and 6 in the Big East. Huskies 12 and 4, 7 and 0 oh in the Big East. And playing in Alumni Hall on campus tonight and ready to go. With Megan Como, Alan Bestwick, Maria Marino joins us shortly. Huskies in the road, National Flag Blues. Providence in the home whites, and Nelson Adota wins the tip. We're underway. And Aaliyah Edwards, who gets the first points of the ball game, it makes her presence felt immediately. Kylie Shepard handles the ball for Providence, number one, one of the freshmen on this squad. She's been an impact player for Providence so far, from Cincinnati, Ohio. Here is Crooms. Alyssa Geary, the senior from Long Range. No, Nelson Adota on the rebound. Bad communication defensively. UConn lucky that didn't go in. Nelson Adota defended by Connecticut's Mary Baskerville. Williams finds space, gets it to go. No foul, but the bucket. Wow, how about that in and out? They couldn't have been more down, but it popped out. Shepard, no. Terrific cut by Shepard. Into Nelson Adota. Works into traffic. Ball's on the floor. Turnover. Really good help defense in there by Scott. Here's Geary defended by Edwards. The senior from the Chicago area will draw the foul. She went in there pretty physically. I, I thought Edwards was doing a pretty good job defending, but they're missing that young lady here tonight. So a right foot, uh, Dorka. Wearing a boot on it today, and will miss this game. Injury described to us as day-to-day, -day, but she on the end of the bench with Paige Beckers as um, the injury hits keep, keep on coming for this UConn team. So Alyssa Geary, only player to start all 19 games this season for Providence. They, too, have been hit by the injury bug throughout the season. Gets them both to go from the free throw line. From outside, Ducharme, no. Rebound is loose. Baskerville will come up with it for the Friars. Mariah Scott with the ball. Again, another one of the freshman recruits on Jim Crowley's squad. Baskerville guarded by Nelson Adota. Geary with the long pass to Crooms for three, no. You notice Providence doesn't go into offensive rebound. They run back to not give up any transition buckets. Their mindset is one of defense, and their statistics show it. There's Edwards guarded by Geary. Williams pass almost too high for Bouchon. Defended well there by Scott, and a UConn turnover again. Here's Shepard running. The kick, Geary couldn't handle the pass. Crooms finds room all the way to the rim. Nice strong take by Crooms. What a difference she has made since transferring in here this year. Two point Providence lead, three minutes into the ball game. Williams into Nelson Adota. We'll get fouled on the way up. Be the first on Baskerville. talked about Providence and Jim Crowley's 
defense being the thing. He said they want to play a lower possession game. And tonight they want to keep UConn in a half court game. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that all year. UConn doesn't traditionally, uh, certainly without Paige Beckers, you know, they don't love the half court game because they haven't done it very well. They've worked on it, they're getting better. They would prefer up and down. Run, run the ball. Transition points. So Nelson Adota good on both free throws. And we're tied at four. All the way to the rim. Shot won't go. Nelson Adota fights for the rebound. Shepard had the miss. Nelson Adota will take it all the way in and get the second foul on Baskerville. And I thought the whistle was late. She was clearly fouled. Good, strong take by Nelson Adota. And there was, there was contact with the body. So, quick foul trouble for Anfield, Connecticut's Mary Baskerville. And she is quickly substituted. Emily Archibald in, 33 for the Friars, and into the ballgame of Ina Westbrook for Nika Mule, who goes to the bench early. And Nelson Agoda back to the free throw strike. And makes them both again. Last four UConn points from the free throw line. Edwards tried to block the inbound attempt by Shepard. The turnaround shot misses. Good rebound by Aliyah Edwards. Husky's run. Here's Westbrook. She'll have to slow it down. Good retreat by the Providence defense. Ten to shoot for UConn. Deshaun called for the ball, missed the effort. Edwards fighting for the rebound. That'll be a tied up ball. Possession arrow will send it to Providence. Good aggressive play oh, inside possession. by Edwards. Yeah, Providence will get the ball in the possession arrow. Sorry. Good effort by Edwards to track that down. Good hustle. And there by Shepard to force that jump. Janae Crooms. It's quite the story for Providence. Here she drives on Westbrook, gets cut off. Good help defense by Ducharme. Nelson Adota picks up the loose ball. All the way to the rim, doesn't get it to go. And Shepard tries to get by Kristen Williams, Williams blocked. Shepard got the rebound, feeds it out to Archibald. That does not fall, rebound, fought for. Kristen Williams comes away with it. That won't fall. Didn't we just come from a hockey game business? Yes. Like a hockey game? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the hockey game was 2-0. This isn't much it's more. Crooms. Under. Doesn't go, but does draw the foul. So timeout as we are already midway through quarter number one here in Providence. Close one between the Friars and the Huskies. The snowy scene in Providence at Alumni Hall on the campus of Providence College where the Friars and the Yukon Huskies are locked in a close one halfway through quarter number one. And a good evening to you, Alan Bestwick with Megan Cuomo. Off the last second decided affair Wednesday night in Chicago at DePaul. What do you want to see from the Huskies tonight against Providence? Well, it'd be nice if they could score a little <laughs> bit. You know, you got to give credit to Providence. But, you know, to me, it, it, this whole experience reminds me of what this whole season has been for Yukon. I mean, think about it. You know, they, they're dealing with more COVID than they thought. Injury transfers snowstorm yesterday they drive up here today they're sl they're starting slow and i'm not shocked yeah uh, let's quickly get our first report from maria marino presented by toyota maria thanks alan yukon freshman 
Caroline Ducharme has been praised by Coach Oriema for her demeanor and her ability to stay even keeled. But she told me it hasn't always been like that, and she's come a long way throughout her career. Nowadays, Coach talks a lot about next play mentality. So making sure that one bad play doesn't turn into multiple or a bad stretch doesn't become a bad quarter. She says you just got to have short term memory and that certainly helped her in the win over to Paul. Certainly uh, did and certainly one of the best traits of the most successful athletes quickly <laughs> moved to the next play. How about you get to our ages and you, you yes. forget a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so here's today Crooms. Local prep star, St. Andrews School, went off to the Big Ten, a couple schools there, has come back home to Rhode Island with a couple years of eligibility back. Daisy Fudd into the ballgame now for the Huskies off the timeout. And this team is becoming Prunes' team. It's, it's Jim Crowley loves it. Providence defense packing into the paint. Six to shoot. Ducharme floats one. The savvy play by the freshman. They've been, she's been, you know, don't want to force that three, but do something different. Get, put the ball on the floor. Make the defense adjust. Really smart play. Not a brilliant shooting game to start for either team as Crooms works inside. Double teamed. Still gets the shot up. Then it falls. Wow. How about the strength there by Crooms to get that ball up in traffic? Leah Edwards didn't see a lot of time in the ballgame at DePaul the other night. Back in the starting lineup today, there's Westbrook for three. What a way for Avina Westbrook to come in and make a statement on this game. Knocking down that three was huge for her team right now. Huskies by four. Boom started by Kristen Williams. Olivia Olsen inside. Archibald will put it up, and the foul will be called. Yeah, no, I don't believe there was a foul call. I think that was a clean block by Westbrook. Two impact plays there from the senior. Geary, no. Westbrook again, almost had the rebound, it fell out of bounds. What I love about this block from Westbrook, she came from the other side, see? Left her feet, did more of a distraction than anything, but she did touch the ball. There's Aaliyah Edwards to knock away the inbound pass. Good active hands in the passing lane by Edwards. It's following up on the as the officials huddle for a second. Following up on the comment, Leah Edwards didn't see much playing time at DePaul the other night. She's back in the starting lineup in this one and is being very energetic. I think Mark Resch think is looking to have. So we're in Alumni Hall in Providence. And all the spectators to get to their seats literally walk along that sideline. And you can, from all of the salt and so on, out in the parking lots from the two feet of snow they had here yesterday, the end line is a little slippery. And it looks like some of that's been tracked onto the playing surface as well. Yeah, yeah, look at all the salt. the salt. Nice pair of shoes, too. <laughs> this fashion moment brought to you by Nugget <laughs> Cool. Yeah, so it's. Um, it's tricky. A little elbow grease is all you need. Behind that mask may be the new athletic director here at Providence, Steve Napolillo. That's a good sign for things to come. Just the boss willing to get his hands dirty and work. I love it. Pick up the mop. That's great. Shot clock in single digits. Step back for three. Rattles around and in. I mean, <laughs> UConn couldn't play to any better defense. 
And Crooms, what a tough shot from the top of the key. Gets this raucous crowd pretty excited. Eight points already for Crooms in this one. Kristen Williams for three. Huskies answer right back. And that one went in. <laughs> That's a way to silence the crowd. I mean, think about Look at that. I mean, Williams can't guard that any better. That's just a tough shot by Cruz. Gracie Fosa, two into the ballgame for Providence. Puts the shot up. No. AZ Fudd on the rebound. Fudd with a spectacular return to action in Chicago on Wednesday. Kicks to Westbrook. Now with 15 to shoot, Davina Westbrook will set the play. And a foul called in the paint. That is going to be on... Olivia Olson, the freshman from upstate New York. She'll pick up the foul, and then she'll pick up the trip to the bench for Providence. And she's been such a great spark off the bench for Providence this season. At 6-3, they need her out there against UConn. Leah Edwards also to the bench for UConn. Fudd for three. No. Nelson Adota with the offensive rebound. Westbrook for three. No. Kristen Williams fights for the ball. Well, Janae Coombs comes away with it. Good hustle by Williams. Just out hustled there by Coombs. Ifosa. A long cross court pass to Lauren Sampson, 15 into the ballgame for Providence. Knocked away from Ifosa. And that'll get knocked out of bounds. That's Audrey Cook. Kristen Williams diving into the Husky bench trying to find that ball. Really good active hands there by Williams. And then you, <laughs> you see she carried it out of bounds. She threw it up to try and save it inbounds and hit right off the face, I think, of Caroline Duchamp. And then Jamel Elliott there to pick her up. Westbrook will knock the inbound pass off the hands of Shepard, and it'll be UConn's ball. Just, you know, I, I think Avina Westbrook has come in and, and made so many exceptional plays here. This here, just a savvy, smart play, knocking it off the Providence player and Shepard. She's knocked down to three, played good defense. In a season that she's had her struggles at times, Avina Westbrook bringing the energy tonight. Nelson Agoda cut off. Another shot at it. Knocked away from her. That was reached in by Mariah Scott. And here come the Flyers with the ball. Kylie Shepard. Outside. Cook cut off. Scott again. Over Nelson Adota. No. Wildly missed. Fudd there for the rebound. Kristen Williams with a very quick first step. If UConn can get the ball up in transition, they can score. You see it right there, but if they let Providence get in that half-court set, they've made it very difficult to execute. Largest lead of the ballgame for the Huskies at five. Time running down, and the end of quarter number one. Jim Crowley sets the play. Here's Sampson, defended by Westbrook. Ten to shoot. Shepard steps back over Nelson Adota. No. Three to shoot. Ball goes through Sampson's hands. She'll be... Harassed by Ducharme, and that will set the shot clock to expiring. I, I, they may be checking to see if there's any time left in the on the clock in the first quarter. Official Mark Resch headed over to the timer's table. Corey Chambers, Sarah Williams also officiating the game. Okay, so 1.1 at the time the shot clock hits zero.
perhaps as much as 1.3. Part of the problem is that they haven't announced that the quarter's not over yet in any significant way, so the spectators are... Uh, <laughs> Walking on the court? Heading for the restrooms and the concession <laughs> stands and, and so on. Good crowd here tonight. A game originally supposed to be played downtown at the Dunkin' Donuts Center with all the weather issues. Uh, moved here and moved from 11 a.m. this morning to 7.30 at night and a pretty good crowd here at Old Alumni Hall, a place I know you had some some great games between oh Connecticut gosh. and Providence. Back in the late 80s and early 90s, Providence was an outstanding basketball team, and, and we were just trying to come up and, and, and be competitive, and we had some great battles with them. All right, so Corey Chambers rotated out of the huddle. <laughs> She said, I'm done. And yeah. Sarah Williams <laughs> rotated into the huddle. And we believe there to be about 1.3 seconds left in quarter number one. All right, they're going to say the period's over. Okay. All righty then. So it's the end of one. UConn has a five-point lead, 15-10. Kristen Williams has been certainly the star of this first quarter for UConn. Fifteen to ten, UConn. As we get ready to start the second quarter here at Alumni Hall in Providence, Como's Court Vision is brought to you by Yale New Haven Health. Meg, well, let, let's take a look at, at, at what Az Fudd means to this team and the difference she has brought since she came back into the lineup against DePaul. She pushes the ball out on the break, looking to score, looking to attack, gets it to Williams, who attacks. I just think the presence of Fudd gives Kristen Williams so much more confidence as well as the rest of her teammates. And, and Providence, that was one of the few fast break layups yeah. that they've given up, or points in transition. But Fudd is a big difference why. Had an outstanding appearance on Wednesday. So Huskies inbound the ball to start quarter number two. Notes from quarter number one, three-point shooting miserable for both teams. Providence overall shooting, not good. There's Aaliyah Edwards, that is good. Well, it was a terrific cut by Fudd that opened everything up, and then Edwards flashed and knocked down the open shot. Janae Coombs is out of the ball game for the moment for Providence. She has eight of the Friars, ten points. Oh, Kristen Williams just missed a steal and score. Here's Shepard. Scott. Nope, check that. That's Sampson. With the shot clock running out, gets it with the left hand. Terrific up and under by Sampson. Junior from Waltham, Mass. And get a foul called. I think they're going to call out on Emily Archibald. They will call it on the freshman Archibald. 33, she will exit the game along with Sampson. So Crooms is back in. Shepard is, is in. Scott, Geary. And here's Nika Mule. Kristen Williams for three and got it. See, she came to get that ball with a, with a purpose and immediately knew she was going to shoot the ball. Largest lead of the ball game again for the Huskies at eight. Shepard guarded by Mule. Bud came over to help. Shot clock into single digits again. Scott got that to go. That's a three. Mariah Scott, the freshman from Holden, Massachusetts. And they're happy to have her back. She missed the first seven games with injury. Leah Edwards trying to post up the smaller player. Steps through. She'll get called for travel. You know, it's always unfortunate when a kid tries to make an unselfish move. Because she saw, watch 32 on the top. She saw her coming down. She saw her teammate open. Either shoot the ball or pass it before the, the double is on its way.
Coombs. Blocked by Nelson Adoda, but they'll call a foul. It did look like her left hand came down a little bit. Look at, I mean, Crooms is so tough. Yeah, she got her with the left arm. Crooms, right. Yeah, Crooms is only 5'10". All Nelson Nadota has to do is just put her arms up, make her shoot over you. So Nelson Nadota to the bench with two fouls. Remember, no Dorka Juhas tonight for UConn. And Janae Crooms continues to dominate what scoring Providence has gotten. Well, she's made such an impact on this team after transferring in. A great kid, has a tremendous competitive spirit. And this is becoming her team, which is tough to do in a short amount of time. Just barely into the second quarter, she's in double figures in scoring. A great leader to the young kids. Fudge just got a little tangled up there. That's a little bit of her inexperience. Dushan got it up to the rim somehow. Edwards got the offensive rebound and won. And a lot of the people in this very small gym are saying <laughs> Dushan walked on the initial shot. Let's take a look. The step. I thought it was a good play. She is very good at that, Caroline Dushan, using yeah, her length. That little step through. Yep. And just, you know, no box out. From the white jersey inside, Alyssa Geary, just tremendous hustle by Aria Edwards, just wanted the ball. Easy Fudd to the bench, Avina Westbrook back in, and Aria Edwards adds the extra. It's a football day, I can call it the extra point, can I? <laughs> sure. Husky's been very good from the free throw line tonight. Here's Shepard. Crooms. Lost the ball. I hear a whistle. Yeah, it was a late whistle, and it was a foul. It, it wasn't a smart reach in with the right arm by Mule. Watch, it was the wrong hand, number one. Look at her with the right hand. Of course it's going to be a foul. Yeah. And a spill to go for effect. <laughs> That's her first. Here's Geary with Edwards defending. Now Shepard. Fires hanging right with UConn in this one. Geary works Edwards. Spins to the left. High glass. No. Kristen Williams. Excellent rebounding. Good defense there by Edwards. Dushan. That won't go. And Aaron three. Try to use the screen of Olivia Edwards to get a clear look at it. Geary feeds a cutting Crooms underneath. What a pass from Geary, the 6'4 senior. 12 points for Janae Crooms. Yukon lead is down to just four. Dushan gets the ball knocked away by Coombs, who's out ahead of the pack. It's fitting she gets the layup. She created the turnover on the other end. And the lead is two. Mika Mule. Now hands back to Dushan. They're going to call her for a travel. Her feet did slide on the floor. It might be from the salt. <laughs> <laughs> Slippery one left. Gino quickly taps Azy Fudd on the leg and sends her into the game for Dushan. And the Huskies up to eight turnovers now in the ball game. Shepard working on Mule. Edwards got a hand on the ball, but that left the lane wide open. Archibald picked up the ball and went right to the rim. The freshman from Kennebunk, Maine. That's her first basket of this ball game. Another good cut by Fudd. Kristen Williams for three. Kristen Williams, a different player at this point in the season than she was 
just a mere two weeks ago. So much better. That's 10 for Williams. Williams would get fouled on the floor by Kristen. And that brings us to the halfway point of quarter number two. Kristen Williams, four of six from the floor, two of two from long range, including that one. Hanging right with the Huskies. Turnovers have been the problem for the defensive-oriented philosophy for the Friars this year. They've only turned the ball over twice, and that player, Janae Crooms, look at that scoring line. She's having an outstanding game, and she's doing it on both ends of the floor, playing well defensively and then very efficient on the offensive end. Huskies have turned the ball over seven times. Providence has gotten ten points off those turnovers. Shepard will take a step. That's something that players are still adapting to. That when you catch that ball and you make that stutter move, that that's now going to be very strictly called a travel. Because we get about, what, eight of them a game call? Yeah. Makes the game unwatchable. Westbrook for three. No. Gets it and fights for the rebound, but collides. I think she collided with uh, Aliyah Edwards. Here's Coombs again. This is Lauren Sampson for three. That doesn't go. And Nelson Adota on the rebound for UConn. Nelson Adota, Westbrook, Edwards, Williams, and Fudd, the five on the full floor for the Huskies. Edwards is getting bumped inside. That double team kicked it back out to Fudd, saved it. Have to look, what, it, what is UConn running offensively? Right now, not much. Oh, wow, Nelson Adota fouled hard on the floor. That'll be Gracie Fosa called for the foul. The sagging man-to-man -man that Providence plays makes it very difficult for UConn to execute their offense. And really good patience and poise. Crews thought she was going to go up and block the shot. Smart play there by Nelson Adota. So UConn gets a 20-second shot clock to inbound the ball, leading by three. Kristen Williams will get fouled. That'll be Janae Crooms with her first foul of the ball game. Crooms doesn't agree with it. She thought she got a clean block. I thought it was a late whistle. So Kristen Williams, the only Husky in double figures in scoring to this point. Four of six from the floor. Two of two from three-point range. With two rebounds and an assist. And a block. And gets one of the two from the free throw strike for the Huskies. That is the first free throw UConn has missed all game. Archibald floats one through. First zone defense we've seen out of UConn here tonight. Well, there's a buzz in this little building tonight, it's isn't there? <laughs> yeah, it's full. Kristen Williams trapped, gets the ball knocked away. There'll be a tied up ball. And right that now, will go yeah. over to the Friars. Providence is just playing with a different energy. Aren't they? And then to pick up the ball there when you see the double team coming, just not a smart play. So see if this Husky defensive set can slow down Providence a little bit. Here's Naraya Scott driving, cut off. Gets the bailout. Coons defended by Flood. Westbrook intercepts the long pass attempt. Good possession defensively with that zone. Two times in a row for UConn. Nelson to go to trying to post up inside. Defended by Geary. Steps away. And will get the bucket. Geary went down to the floor and comes up holding her shoulder. And a whistle. And the teams are being sent to their bench. 
which means that the officials are going to go review something. And we're about to find out what that something is. All right, so Sarah Williams informs us they're looking for an unintentional and unobserved intentional foul. Uh, not uh, not un unobserved intentional foul. Nothing that I no. see. I thought it was a really strong move by Nelson Adota. Yep. But we don't get the final say in this, do we? No, we don't get any say. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> All right, well, now the referee rotation to confirm what was seen. A year ago, these two teams only played one time. Providence was within one of UConn at the end of one. And then UConn blew away in the second quarter and third quarter to uh, wind up winning that game 87 to 50. We have a decision. Nothing incidental contact. And that's certainly the right call. All right, so Nelson Adota to the bench. Fudd Williams, Edwards, Dushan back on the floor, along with Westbrook for UConn. That's a long one from Mariah Scott. It doesn't go. And it remains a six-point Husky lead. Dushan gets her second basket of the night, and a timeout called by Providence. Caroline Ducharme spent a while on the bench after missing six of her first seven shots in this game, but has impacted the game quickly now. Well, you see Edwards at the top of the key with the good pass, you know, a, a really nice cut by Ducharme. There have been a lot of good cuts that they have missed throughout the game. Nice find by Edwards. Coming up, Gary Apple and Kara Walters have all the first half highlights and analysis on the UConn Women's Basketball Halftime Show presented by Duncan. <laughs> 2.32 left to go in quarter number two before we hear from Gary and Kara. So Providence will inbound the ball from its end line as play resumes after the review. Booms guarded by Fudd. Geary puts it up. No. Good rebound position there by Dushan. Huskies have hit three of their last four shots. They're on an 8-0 run. Minute 58 to go from outside. AZ Fudd for three. Well, and Shepard fell on the, got tied up on the screen, so Fudd was wide open. That's a backbreaker against a defense that has played really well all half. Geary looked to shoot, looked to pass. Now here's who else? Janae Kroom. She'll kick it out to Geary. Gets a step away from Fudd, cut off by Westbrook. Shot clock down to five. From long range, that was Geary, she missed it. Fudd with the rebound. Fudd works off the screen from Edwards. And takes a three that's short. Oof, that was going to be a big collision by the side. Who gets the ball? That'll be off Providence. Be UConn's ball. In the previous possession, you watch Aaliyah Edwards sets the screen. And then Shepard just fell. 
she ran right into the screen. You got to get your body sideways and slide through. And Fudd made her pay. And Aaliyah Edwards is solid. <laughs> I wouldn't want to run into her. All right, so 20 seconds to shoot for UConn. Dushan works her way to the rim, and the right hand turnaround goes. Just a savvy basketball play from the freshman who plays well beyond her years. Six points now. 13-0 run for UConn. Has broke, broken this game open in the second quarter just a little bit. Froome steps back. Glass, no. Edwards taps the rebound. It'll go to Providence. Here's Crooms again. About a three-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Fury guarded by Edwards. Goes through a screen, and the shot goes off the rim, and time will expire in the second quarter. Aaliyah Edwards was the one that hit the deck off that screen, but the shot wouldn't go, and so UConn, after being played point for point by Providence, uses a 13-0 run at the end of the second quarter to pull away. Hey, Gina, a long time since you took a bus up on game day. Do you think that had anything to do with the slow start, but you went, you finished on a nice run there to end that quarter? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know anymore. I mean, um, between, um, you know, not being able to practice yesterday because of the snow and taking a bus up here today and then, you know, bus wouldn't start leaving the hotel, so we had to get vans to come over and get us. and. Uh, so, yeah, it's been a real adventure, but, um, you know, that's no excuse for some of the stuff that we do. But, uh, yeah, we made a good run at the end, and, um, you know, we just got to make sure that we keep flowing on offense. You know, we get stuck. The ball gets stuck, and, you know, when the ball moves, we're in good shape. When it doesn't, and um, then we're not in good shape. I like the way with Fudd's presence, Kristen Williams seems to play even better. Well, yeah, um, you know, they're not going to give us too much inside. So our big guys, you know, we're trying to get them to be ball handler screeners and, you know, give AZ and Kristen an awful lot of opportunities to shoot the ball. Um, you know, just got to knock in a couple and just got a slow start. But, you know, they're not going away, these guys. They play, you know, they play hard and they, you know, they shoot up, you know, as many threes as they can. And, and we just got to do a good job defensively and then get out in transition. All right. Good luck the second half. Thanks. Thanks. So the Huskies go to the locker room with a 13-point lead on the Flyers. Caroline Ducharme started one for her first six. She finished two of her last two. We're in the cozy confines of Alumni Hall on the Providence College campus on a chilly Sunday night. And the UConn Huskies lead the Flyers by 13 as we get ready to start quarter number three. With Megan Como, I'm Alan Bestwick. A lot of times at the end of the, the, the first half, those interviews from Gino, we get what the Huskies didn't do well. But there were some things they did do well, especially in the last part of that second quarter. Yeah, I mean, they attacked offensively a little bit. And, and I thought Kristen Williams, you know, she's leading them in scoring. I thought, I thought she, she played really well. But it's all about execution. So you see, she's got the ball, she passes it. Now watch, she goes, she sets a really good screen on FUD who cuts back. Now look at that. When you set a good screen, you often are open. There's a perfect example of it there. Now watch Edwards passes and then goes to set a screen. What? Coming around from the corner. The nice pass. The defender falls down. Fudd knocks down the three. When they execute, they they have a pretty good outcome, but Providence is in that sagging man-to-man. -man. They pack in the lane, and they make it difficult to run your offense. You have to knock down outdoor shots. Let's uh, check in with Maria on the Providence side of the story at halftime. All right, Alan, head coach Jim Crowley liked his team's effort and how they competed. He said on the stat sheet, things looked about even, except UConn made more shots than they did. But he thought their pace slowed offensively, especially off the ball. They did more standing around and watching in the last few minutes of the half. So he wants to pick that up here in the second. Yeah, they had an incredible defensive energy for the first quarter and a half or so. Did the home team wearing white? Here's Kristen Williams. 
It's hard to sustain that energy. Ducharme for three, yes. Both sides of the rim, back up off the glass, and nothing but net. And she's got a huge contingent of family and friends here. Excited, they're all jumped up in the crowd, excited to see her knock down that shot, start the second half. Ball knocked away, Huskies get it. Good steal there by Mule. Far corner. Kristen Williams missed. Mary Baskerville back into the game for Providence. Two quick fouls early in the first quarter. There is Kylie Shepard for two. The freshman from Cincinnati. And, a, and an outstanding freshman playing better than even Crowley thought she would. Just having a sensational year. One of his freshman class he's got that he thinks is really going to impact his program. Duchar missed that one. No Husky there for the rebound. That was a rather quick shot. Baskerville on the pass and roll. And will shoot free throw. Well, a don't, free throw. Don't forget, Baskerville was sitting most of that first half with two fouls. They welcome her presence back into the game. Just a nice give and go. Nelson Dota not active enough. And then she gets fouled. Fortunately for the Huskies, they call the foul on Caroline Ducharme. Nelson Dota has two already. Olivia will go to the bench. Avina Westbrook will come into the game. Really good first half for Westbrook. As far as energy and impact on the game. So here is Enfield, Connecticut's Mary Baskerville in her senior season at Providence. Missed the uh, add-on. Got the ball for going over a thousand career points in a ceremony prior to the game tonight. Did Baskerville. Huskies run some offense. Westbrook will just step back and drain it. That's a two. Well, if they're not going to stop the ball and stop the shooter, you might as well shoot it. Five points now for Avina Westbrook. Janae Crooms with the ball for Providence. She was most all of their scoring in the first half. UConn in the 2-3 zone defensively. Shot clock running out. A long three missed from Geary, but the long rebound goes to Scott. She'll pull up and drop a two. Mariah nice. Scott. Yeah, nice hustle by Scott to track down that offensive rebound. Had her best game of the season on Wednesday night at Creighton. Looking to follow it up here against UConn. Here's Aaliyah Edwards, now Kristen Williams. Ducharme steps in the lane, the floater won't go. Baskerville the rebound. And you call that foul on Avita Westbrook. Jim Crowley, I talked to him this morning after their shooter on the Providence shooter on. I said, your team looks better this year. He said, we are. If we can cut down the turnovers, we're going to be a really improved team from a year ago. We're playing well here tonight. Baskerville on the roll for two. I like their poise offensively. They're not getting rattled. Really good execution there for Baskerville to get the open look. And then on this end of the floor, they just play outstanding defense. Mule ends up on the floor. Westbrook from outside, whistle, and she is fouled. Alyssa Geary will get called for her second. Not a great foul from Geary. Just go and contest. And she you're was not gonna, Yeah, you're not going to block it. Or don't, or don't try to block it. Just get a hand in the face. And she was behind the three-point line when fouled. So three free throws for Avina Westbrook.
I guess that foul paid off. Not something you'd expect. Westbrook, a 73% free throw shooter this season. Which isn't typically a great number, but for this team, it's pretty good this year. She'll get one out of the three. And make the lead 11. Baskerville wanted the ball. Janae Crooms for three. Got it. It was a little miscommunication defensively by UConn, and I thought Providence did a really good job of rec recognizing it and making them pay. 17 for the Cranston, Rhode Island native. Westbrook into Edwards. Baskerville playing with two fouls. Blocks the shot attempt. What a block by Baskerville. And Shepard. No. Fight for the rebound. It'll be Kristen Williams who comes away with it. Look at that. All five Friars back. Four of them ahead of Kristen Williams. She will draw the foul. Really good spacing, good decision making. UConn, you see they're scrambling a little bit there. Nice shot by Queens. 17 points in this ballgame. So that was the third foul on Alyssa Geary. She goes to the bench for Providence. Audrey Cook comes in, one of the freshmen. Kristen Williams steps around from the free throw line. Good. Nice extra dribble to get around the defense to free herself up for the open shot. 13 points for UConn, number 13. Cook cut off by Mueller. Huskies back in that zone defense again. In his own defense, you have to communicate with one another. And Shepard was left wide open, missed the three though. And rebound right to Aaliyah Edwards. Mule will try to drive, was well defended, but will draw a foul on Kylie Shepard. Kristen Williams has had the touch for the Huskies tonight. Five of eight from the floor, two of three from long range. Two of her 13 points shown here. Kristen Williams leading the way on the scoreboard for the Huskies tonight. Well, what better position to be in, right? She gets the ball back here, the handoff, going to her strong hand. Baskerville comes out to hedge, and then the lack of communication defensively by Providence. Williams does a really good job of recognizing it and burning them. Five of eight from the floor, two of three from long range. It's also got four rebounds, three assists, and only one turnover for the senior, Kristen Williams. Having so, a, yeah, having a terrific game, and, and I think this team misses Dorka Juhas not yes. being able to play today. Sort of a last minute decision. Just joining us, Juhas with a right foot injury described as day to day, not long term. Here is Nika Mule. It just seems like there's always something that this team has got to go through. Man, it's been that's the story of the season, right? Yeah, and she's sitting next, there's Dorka, and she's sitting next to Paige Beckers, who's been out since early December with her knee injury. Expected to be back in the next several weeks. But it has been a story of injuries and, and illness at times for the Huskies this season, like so many teams in college basketball. Plumes. That was an awkward off-balance attempt. Mule. Defended by Crims. Looking for Leah Edwards. Tries to rifle it into a cutting AZ FUD. But into traffic. Yeah, not a smart decision there by Mule. Shepard for three. No, way off the mark. But streaking in was Cook to get the rebound. A great hustle by Cook. Audrey Cook, the freshman. Feeds the corner to Scott. No, around and out. Friars only shooting 20% from three in the ballgame. Aliyah Edwards somehow saves that pass and got it up and in. 
Transition bucket. It's been much easier for UConn to score in transition. Three and a half to go. Quarter number three here in Providence. Scott kicks it to Crooms. Drives into four Huskies and finds a waiting teammate underneath. Olivia Olsen, the freshman, with the bucket. Those are Olsen's first points of the ball game. Dushan tries to go it alone, has it knocked away from her. Scott on defense. And she never gets rattled, but she looked like a wait. That wasn't foul. Livino's going to go to back at the scores table to check in for the Huskies. Here is Kylie Shepard, cut off. Finds Cook, cut off. Shepard will try again, shot clock at five. No, and Dushan gets the rebound. That was some really solid defense for the Huskies. Dushan tries to go end to end between two defenders, and she will draw contact. Check out your take it to the rim moment brought to you by Duncan. Well, I mean, the key is we've talked about it all game. It's transition. Look at that pass for Mule. Edwards snags it, gets a hand on it, and finishes. Ball gets up the floor so nicely in the air. Good looking. Foul was on Olivia Olson. And here is Caroline Ducharm. The find of the season for the Yukon Huskies, the freshman. Since Paige Beckers went out injured. Just uh, showing what she can do. Averaging 17 points and just under five rebounds a game in that time. And, and you have to take the positive out of every situation. You don't want Beckers injured, but if she doesn't go down, Duchamp doesn't get these minutes. And of course, the game winner at the party of the night. Good defense by Mika Mule leads to the turnover. Edwards runs, kicks it back to Duchamp. And that will be a turnover to Providence. So Ducharme and Edwards will both go to the bench after that play. <laughs> there are almost no words to describe what UConn just did on that fast break. It's not good decision making. Yeah. Wilson to go back into the ball game. That's her on Olsen. Shepard cut off, Olsen rolls, and gets the shot to go up and over Kristen Williams. What a terrific play there from two freshmen, Shepard to Olsen. Great sign of the future for Providence. Inside of two to go in this third quarter here at Alumni Hall in Providence. <laughs> Got a foul underneath. That's going to be on Nika, on, uh, who's that going to be on, Mule? Nika yeah. Mule for an illegal screen. A pattern we've seen over and over again from this UConn team. Toward the end of a quarter, toward the end of a period, the performance level just kind of noses over a little bit. Ball on the floor for Shepard. No. Look at that hustle. That was it, Fosa. Shot clock running down. Three. Shepard throws one up. Hits iron. Long rebound to Williams. Tries to go it all the way. And they will call the charge. I thought she shuffled her feet before they would call a charge. Let's see if Fosa gets back. I thought she sold it better than the actual foul. I thought Williams tried to stop. Now it'll be first and second, and the turnover to Providence with under a minute to go in the third quarter. Well, uh, Westbrook will foul Coons trying and, to get the steal. And Crowley is going, calm down. You know, you can't throw that crap, that cross-court pass like that. Like that one up in the air, that's just right to get picked off. They're lucky that Westbrook was just a little late and committed the foul. 
So St. Andrews School is a prep school just across the Providence River from this campus that has turned out a lot of really top flight basketball players like Michael Carter Williams, uh, Bonzi Colson, and Janae Coombs is the first female basketball player from the St. Andrews School to have her number retired. That's pretty incredible. She had an outstanding high school career, started out her college career, Ohio State for two years, Michigan State for a year, or Crowley and Providence Love that she transferred in here this year. Very happy to have her. And she played AAU ball with Caroline G. Sharman, her sister. With AZ Flood. In the traffic, will draw a foul. It's going to be Olsen's third, Olivia Olsen. Nice cut, nice recognition. What you have to do when you get in the lane in, in traffic, you either you got to score or get fouled. A savvy play there from the freshman. So after missing 11 games, AZ Fudd comes back and scores 15 points at DePaul the other night. And I think the even more noteworthy aspect of that is that most of those points were in the second half when the game was on the line. Yeah, she had to make some big shots. 12 of her 15 points in the second half. And some of those threes that she hit were at critical points where her team really needed a bucket. So Nika Mule goes to the bench. Aaliyah Edwards comes back into the ball game. Huskies apply a little pressure on the inbound pass. Coombs gets the inbound from Ifosa. She's that big brace on Ifosa's knee. She missed most of last season coming back from an, an injury. Nelson Adota will knock that away. I, I correct myself. She suffered that injury at the end of last season and missed all of the summer and part of the beginning of this season recovering. Baskerville, the left-hand floater over Nelson Adota, gets her own miss. Samson drives, floats, and got it. And a foul. No, they'll call the charge. I, I thought Edwards was there. Crowley doesn't agree. But I thought I thought Aaliyah Edwards was there. Fudd get beat, gets beat off the dribble. Look at her. She got there. She's outside the arc. So another review forthcoming. And it may be to see whether Aaliyah Edwards' feet were on that restricted area arc or not. And, um, and we'll find out for sure in just a second, but I suspect that's what they're going to have a look at. Sarah Williams coming over to let us know what the uh, <laughs> call is. And has a collision with the mask on her way back on the court. Of course, of course there's a collision. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so confirming that's what they're looking at? Yeah, they're con they're trying to, they're, Crowley con contested this call saying were her feet outside the restricted area, and that angle proves that they were not. They were not. So Lauren Sampson's going to get a bucket. And Aaliyah so Edwards is going to get a foul. So it's a block and the bucket is good. Yes. this home crowd trying to get him even louder and for a Sunday night after a blizzard in a game with the uh, location change and time change pretty good crowd tonight here in Providence all right so here is after some time Lauren Sampson the junior from Waltham Massachusetts stepping to the free throw strike Samson was injured late in her freshman season, spent most of her sophomore season last year catching up, according to Jim Crowley. And 
And that rattles around and out. Five seconds left in the quarter. Baskerville defending Westbrook, who will not get a shot away. And will not get a foul. And that will be how the third quarter ends. So it's an eight-point lead for UConn as we go to the fourth. Our game reset presented by Ford. It is an eight-point lead. Huskies led by 13 at the half, but the Friars went on a little run at the end of that uh, third quarter. Janae Kroon is leading the way for the home squad. Kristen Williams is leading the way for UConn. And Janae Crooms, she's been everywhere, it seems like, for Providence. Well, I mean, her experience shines through. The nice, aggressive take and the pretty finish. How about the strength splitting the double team in the low post and the finishing? And it's not only inside, it's step back three with a hand in the face. I tell you, the kid, she's got two threes, 19 points, two assists, two steals. And she's, you know, uh, Jim Crowley told me before the game, she's a leader and been a great mentor for these kids, and she has them believing. Let's check with Maria Marino. Hey, Alan, Gino said in that huddle, he's not happy that Providence is getting layups and fouls against UConn. He said, I don't understand that. When there's a loose ball, they're all over it. We have to go harder, especially on the boards. That's a good point. I mean, the rebounding is one, but 50-50 balls, I think it goes to the white jerseys. Really impressed with the energy that Providence has brought in the entire game. Going to be a foul called. Well, UConn is clapping, so it's against Providence. I think they called that on Janae Crooms. A three-second three call. Three-second call? Okay. One of my least favorite calls in the game. Just tell the kid to get out of the lane. You don't have to blow the whistle. If she continues to offend, then you, could, then you blow the whistle. AZ Fudd. No. Nelson Adota skies for the rebound, gets it knocked out of her hands by Baskerville. And I believe they're going to call Baskerville for a foul. Yes, they will. Yeah, she was clapping as if something good was going to happen, and they called her for the foul. That's her third. And the look of consternation on her face. All right, so 20 seconds for UConn to shoot. Williams inside the Nelson Adoto gets good position and was able to spin before the double team came. Well, she felt where the defensive pressure was and spun around. Smart move. Didn't waste any time and kept the ball up. Eight points for Nelson Adoto tonight. Who spent a lot of time in the beginning of the game on the bench because she got an early foul trouble. Baskerville gets stripped by Aaliyah Edwards and then there's a heavy collision and a foul. Foul's going to be on Baskerville. I think their heads might have bumped on the way down. Aaliyah Edwards went down hard. And while Baskerville picked up her fourth, I see think the, her head heads hit. bang right there together? Watch their two heads. Oh, it's head to shoulder. Yeah, I think her head right oh, here hit bang. the floor. Oh, oh, oh. A brutal collision there. Mm. So they'll send Caroline Duchon back into the ball game and call Aaliyah Edwards to the bench. She, not only did she hit her the right side of her head, but her left hand. Mm. She's favoring. Her whole arm. So Janelle Francisco down there to have a chat with Aaliyah Edwards. Athletic trainer for the Huskies. She had a very busy year. Yes, she has. She is terrific. She, she, they are in very good hands with Janelle. Quick foul whistled underneath, and that's going to be Alyssa Geary, and that'll be her fourth. So two of the bigs for Providence suddenly with four fouls, and Geary will head back out of the game. Ten-point UConn lead. Nelson Adota using her height and gets a bucket. I mean, they should give it to her every single time. They cannot stop her. Here is Shepard. Sampson. Intercepted. Ducharme intercepted the pass. Great anticipation. She runs and gets rewarded. Fudd to Ducharme for two. Timeout, Providence.
Defense turning into offense, common theme in these Yukon parts. Right there, the steal and the score. Caroline Ducharme. Six zero run for the Huskies to start the fourth quarter has UConn leading by 14. We uh, have had a chance to bring you a lot of great moments in UConn history over the past 10 years. SNY has brought you these games. Here's one from six years ago. Number three, Morgan Tuck. Number four, Mariah Jefferson. Number 30, Brianna Stewart. Can't do any better than to leave your four years in stores with four championship banners on the walls. I mean, they were, they, that particular group is incredible. There have been a lot of incredible players that have played here, and that'll be an, an excellent show. So this current season's UConn squad comes back onto the floor, having lit up Providence a bit to start this fourth quarter, though so far in this game, they've not been able to put this Providence team away. It is a 14-point advantage, though. Still eight minutes to go in the ballgame. Providence has just played so steady. They played well defensively, and two of their better players who averaged between them 23 have only scored four. They really miss the, the production of Geary and Shepard. Shot clock running down. Five to shoot. Crooms. Got it. <laughs> Off balance. Time running out. And it goes. 22 points for Janae Crooms. Nobody else on Providence has more than five in the ballgame. I mean, that's leadership stepping up. She's played in Big Ten games. Fudd. Nelson Adota kicked out to Westbrook. Yes! That's a huge three from the senior. Don't look at the score so much, but her team needed it for the momentum. She needed that for her confidence. Nine points for Avina tonight. Three of five, two of four from outside. Sampson cut off by Westbrook. Crooms cut off by Westbrook. Ten to shoot. From the corner, Shepard, no. Fight for the rebound, one by the Huskies. And Shepard 0 for 4 from three-point range, only one of 13 from the floor. The kid averages 12 a game. Dushan has really come on fire after starting the game struggling from shooting. Here's Fudd. Tried to feed it between defenders. Cut off. Nelson Adota from outside. Five to shoot. That will be a turnover. She just needs to shoot that ball. Here is Janae Crooms. Fires inside. Give and go. Ducharme was there. She'll draw the foul. I mean, Crooms knew that that was the play, and, and the middle was wide open. She passed and caught with a purpose. Watch. The kid comes up. She throws it to her. That's just a textbook give and go. Let's see the play develop and see it before it happens. Great play. Career high for Janae Coombs is 27 points. That was her 23rd that just went in the bucket. And I'm talking career high from her time at Ohio State, Michigan State. Oh, yeah. And they both go there. 24 now. And by the way, two years of eligibility left, including this one for Janae Coombs. Williams off to Duchamp's screen, then puts it on the floor, goes all the way to the rim. Terrific decision by Williams. Fake the three, defense is off balance, taken to the rim. Audrey Cook. Now Shepard. 
Feeds in nicely into the paint to Olsen. She can't put the ball up and in. Gets her own miss, though. Here's Shepard again from just inside the free throw line. No. Ducharme in a tangle of bodies. And, and, dude, that was the second defensive rebound Ducharme tried to get. She's got to initiate contact, box out, and then force that call over the back. You go straight up for it. They're not going to call it. So 20, a fresh 20-second shot clock for Providence. Mary Baskerville back into the game with four fouls. They get it inbound to Scott. Draws the foul on the circus shot attempt between defenders. Another late whistle. It looked like Ducharme's left hand. Good smacker. Good aggressive take through the lane. Why come down like that with the left arm? It's what they're looking for every time. So. I mean, it's, if she makes that circus shot, well then, <laughs> God bless her. You know, you, you can't do much about that, but don't make it, it easy and give her two freebies at the line. So third foul on Dushan, Naraya Scott, freshman from Holden, Massachusetts, which is just north of Worcester. Another AEU teammate of, of Caroline Dushan. Yep. Missed the first seven games of the season injured. And has played her way back into form. Kristen Williams. Yes! Rattled around and went in. We used the screen nicely set by Olivia Nelson Adota. Seventeen for Williams. Baskerville. Ooh. Westbrook went flying in for a steal. Didn't get it and didn't foul. There's Coons. Working on Dishon. Nelson Adota was coming to help. Change directions. Five to shoot. Down on the floor. They're going to call a foul. I want to see who they're going to call it on. They're going to call it on Easy Fudd. Didn't see it. But it gets us to a timeout. Kristen Williams leading the way on the scoreboard for UConn tonight. Here's a couple more of her 17. 4.48 to go here in Providence. I said I didn't like the foul call. I don't think Coach liked it much either. Uh, no, and he's like, what, just because somebody <laughs> falls down, there's got to be a foul? I didn't think it was a great call. I'd like to see it again. Usually ask him, we can do that. So that Fudd reaches in. Gosh, you know what? It looks like she hit her on the arm. By that angle, I... she hit her on the arm. The hand is part of the ball. But it looked like she hit her hand. I can't argue with that call. <laughs> All right, so with 20 seconds to shoot, Providence will attempt to inbound the ball. Leah Edwards will knock it away. Avita Westbrook will get it knocked away after she made the steal. Baskerville and Fudd will tie the ball up. And so UConn will take over. It was an outstanding defensive play by Westbrook stepping in, stealing the ball, and then lost it. Good hustle all around. 14-point lead for UConn as we hit four and a half to go. And she was wide open inside. Nelson Adota. Fudd? No. Bodies hit the floor. No foul called. Here's Geary back into the game with four fouls. She'll try and take it to her cell, to the rim, and she'll draw the foul on Nelson Adota. That will be her third. Again, you come down hard with the right arm. And you're always going to get called for the foul. It's a nice aggressive take by Geary. Well guarded until that point. Just keep your hand up. 
So Alyssa Geary, the only player to start all 19 games that Providence has played this season as they've had their rash of the injuries and illnesses go through the squad, has had a tough night scoring-wise here against UConn. Two points on 0 of 7 from the floor. And now adding on from the free throw strike. Great play off the Edwards screen by Kristen Williams and Aliyah Edwards. Really good cut there by Williams. Edwards almost too lofty with the pass, but the good catch and finish by Williams. Geary working on Edwards. Tosses inside to Baskerville, cut off by Nelson Adota. Wow, has to make a fling back in bounds. Now Coombs has the ball, lost it, trying to cross over. And foul going to be called from behind. And that is going to be on Mary Baskerville, and that should be it for her. How about that give and go? Now look, a little too lofty, nice catch. You want that ball fired in there just so it gets there faster, so there's less, less time needed. That lofty ball gives the defense a chance to recover quicker. Good finish by Williams. So the Enfield Connecticut senior has fouled out of this game with 3.30 to go. Huskies with a 15-point lead. Nelson Adota. Kristen Williams guarded closely by Coombs that time. Avina Westbrook. Yes. Nice play in the flow of the offense coming off the screen. Arkin Order is back here on the defensive end. That's what leaders do. 11 points for Westbrook. Let's check in with Maria. Yeah, Alan, in January leading up to tonight, Avina Westbrook averaging about eight points per game. I asked her to evaluate her play recently. She said she's been in a bit of a slump, but that everyone goes through that at some point. She's still trying to attack, but it's not really about scoring points for her. What's important is her team is winning and getting it done together, but she does want to be more aggressive both on the boards and on defense. It's the best game we've seen in a little bit well, from Avina. I, I think she's been aggressive to Maria's point. She's been aggr aggressive on both ends. Gary runs into Aliyah Edwards. The ball falls into Shepard's hands, and she'll get a couple. That's just her second... Second field goal of the game, second main field goal of the game for Shepard, two of 16. Yeah, I mean, as close as Providence is, they, they're within 15, but... It would be a much different game if she was shooting the ball better. Just well, such an impressive freshman for Providence. And then on the other end, Kristen Williams, the senior. What, what an evening she is having. You know, she's moving well without the basketball. They're working well as a team offensively when they move. That's the key. Attacking, that's when she's at her best. Reads the defense really well. I mean, that's just outstanding, reading the defense, getting Coons off balance, faking the three, reading the D, and taking it to the hole. Those seven rebounds, they lead the team in this game. Kristen Williams, not just in scoring and rebounding. It doesn't bode well for the forwards in center. <laughs> <laughs> There's an intercepted pass. And end to end, Mariah Scott. So how about that after a timeout? They turn it over. That's the stuff that makes the coach very frustrated. You're being kind. Well, he's trying to be. <laughs> Kristen Williams blocked. Who else? Janae Crooms. Aliyah Edwards with her all the way down the floor. She'll throw it up over Nelson Adota and draw a foul. You know, what Edwards has got to do is stop the ball. Running alongside it doesn't really do anything. you got to get ahead of it and stop it. So she's got to rethink and redirect. So the foul, the fourth on Olivia Nelson Adota. And look at the numbers on Janae Crooms tonight. 
I mean, she's just about doubled her numbers. Wow. Reminder that uh, full recap of tonight's game, plus Gino Oriana's post-game news conference on the UConn Women's Basketball post-game show presented by Guy Cole right after the game. Marianne Kara standing by. Oh. And the missed free throw. And the Huskies will get away with just one of two there. Minute 20 to go in this ball game in Providence. 63rd meeting between Providence and UConn. A lot of standing around by blue jerseys. Shot clock running down. 2 1. Not even going to get a shot off. What did those dribbles accomplish? I mean, that's what's frustrating. You see that there's four seconds on the shot clock when you get the ball and you stand there and you dribble between your legs. That's what makes him crazy. And, and do you see the pattern that I feel that at the end of quarters, a little bit? Yeah, I mean, they just, they, they stop attacking. And it happens at different times. It, it's certainly happening at the end of, the, of these quarters, the third and the fourth. Yeah. Steal gone for, missed, results in an Olivia Olsen basket, and that is going to be a quick foul by Noia Scott, if nothing else, to stop the clock. With 45.4 to go in the game, Friars down 10. And the frustration for Gino is his team goes through long stretches at various times where maybe they're up by 10, 15, and then they take their foot off the gas and they let the other team back. Now it's only a 10-point game. So here is Avina Westbrook at the free throw stripe. After that bit of slump that Maria talked about a little bit ago, Avina Westbrook has had double figure scoring in two of the last three games and will again tonight here in Providence who make it three of four for the fifth year senior. Timeout Providence. So the uh, fourth of four straight on the road will be Wednesday night, the long trip to, to Creighton. Last time the Huskies only came away with an eight-point win back on January 9th, and Jim Crowley's Friars just played Creighton on Friday night. He said to me, that game Wednesday is going to be good. Yeah, I mean, Creighton is really good, and if you remember, they pressed UConn in the fourth quarter and made a huge run and made the game really difficult. They're a well-coached team. They shoot the ball well. They share the ball well. <laughs> it's going to be a beauty. They've got like 12 players that they play, all of them in a big rotation, and none of them are afraid to shoot. And uh, so it'll be a good one. That's Wednesday night at 7 here on SNY from Omaha. Ed Cooley here. His Providence men got a big win earlier today. Two-point win over Marquette. Great win. And by the way, the Friars and his cousin is playing in this game, that right? That was my point. Janae Crooms is the cousin of PC's men's coach, Ed, Ed and, Cooley. And I, and I happen to know, as, as Shepard knocks down a tough shot, uh, Gino is uh, Gino Oriam is also really good friends with Ed Cooley. Yeah. It has uh, the Friar men playing well. Less than 30 seconds to go in the game. UConn's lead is 10. Shot clock again running down. Single digits. Westbrook with the step back. No. And a Providence rebound. So UConn will go to 8 0 in first place in the Big East and 13 and 4 on the season. Providence will go to 9 and 11, 4 and 7. In conference play. And the streak for UConn over Providence will go now to 30 consecutive wins. The Huskies over the Friars, but uh, but this was an intensely played game tonight here in Providence for sure. I tell you what, Providence is better than their record, and <laughs> they played so tough at home, and the, the full crowd here loved it. Well, Janae Crooms for Providence led the way for the Friars. 27 points, equaling her career high. And tonight's player of the game presented by Cadillac for UConn was the senior Kristen Williams. 19 points, really, really efficient shooting, led the team in rebounding tonight. Yeah, she had an energy about her, you know, and she played well. She attacked. All right, Maria Marino is with the head coach.
Coach, you missed Adorka Juhas tonight. How does your team continue to handle any adversity thrown its way? Sometimes good, sometimes not so good, you know. Um, you know, we let ourselves get up to like a 15-point lead, 16-point lead, and, you know, uh, but it's been one thing after another. We're just trying to constantly find who can get it done that night, and, uh, you know, it's just been a struggle, you know, all season long, and tonight was not that much different. Well, tonight it was Kristen Williams getting it done. What did you like from her? Well, I thought she was aggressive, you know, and, um, you know, I thought she was looking to score different ways, you know, going to the basket and not just settling for one thing or another. Um, but, you know, we need better flow in our offense. You know, I thought this was one of the worst offensive performances we had all year. You know, there's just no, you know, no rhyme or rhythm to it. And, um, you know, we got to take care of that before, you know, before Wednesday. Right, you have Creighton, so how do you prepare for them? They played you tough last time. Well, yeah, and they're even better at home, you know, and they score a lot of points, and, and we're going to have to figure out, you know, how to get more people involved in our offense so that we don't rely too much on one person. Thanks a lot, Coach. Alan? All right, Maria, thanks. Thoughts of Gino Orieva after his Huskies wrap up a 69-61 win tonight here in Providence. More to come from Alumni Hall in a minute. Kristen Williams leading the way for the Huskies.